And we welcome you once again to Journey into Faith, brought to you every week by The Bible Speaks in Laconia, New Hampshire, USA. Wherever you are in this world, let God's Word speak to you. Tonight, we are going to be dealing with this subject, the delusions of this world. Satan has filled this world with all kinds of falsehoods. They're delusions. And as we proceed into the Word of God to reveal these delusions to you, may God give us all wisdom not to ever fall for them. Right now, we're going to begin by having a beautiful song sung by Eugenia. She's going to sing this, this uh, tremendous hymn, I Just Keep Trusting My Lord. I just keep trusting my Lord as I walk along. I just keep trusting my Lord and he gives a song. Though the storm clouds darken the sky o'er oh, the heavenly trail, I just keep trusting my Lord. He will never fail. He's a faithful friend, such a faithful friend. I can count on him to the very end. Though the storm clouds darken the sky or the heavenly trail, I just keep trusting my Lord. He will never fail. I just keep trusting my Lord as I walk along. I just keep trusting my Lord and he gives a song. Though the storm clouds darken the sky or the heavenly trail, I just keep trusting my Lord. He will never fail. He's a faithful friend, such a faithful friend. I can count on him to the very end. Though the storm clouds darken the sky or the heavenly trail, I just keep trusting my Lord. He will never fail. I just keep trusting my Lord. He will never fail. We want to take this opportunity to greet each of you wherever you are in this world. Just recently, somebody joined us as a Facebook friend from the Netherlands, and we are so glad that you have joined us. And each one that has joined us in Pakistan and I don't want to mention too many because I might miss your nation, but you're all over the world. And we thank God that you have desired to join us as we propagate the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right now, my wife is going to be playing for you a song that really ministers life, if you think of the words. It's entitled, Reach Out to Jesus.
Reach out to Jesus. He is reaching out to you. Will you stand as we turn to 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter? I'll be reading the first 12 verses. 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and by the gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by the Spirit, nor by the word, nor by letter, as from us, as the day of the Lord is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there first comes a falling away, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of partition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. We're talking about the Antichrist there. Remember ye not that when I was with you, yet with you, uh, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in that time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work our current situation. Only he who now letteth will let. He'll only allow it to happen when he wants it to happen until it be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the gift or the love of the truth that they might be saved and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved and for this cause God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie that all might be damned who believe not the truth but hath pleasure in un unrighteousness let's pray father we don't want to be deceived deluded we don't want to father find ourselves not abiding in the truth there's such an absence of truth being given over the airwaves today. Thank God for those that are giving the truth. And the truth is your word. Father, help us to understand the dangers of our time being the days that precede the revealing of the Antichrist after the rapture of the church. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Now, the Bible clearly teaches one of the characteristics of the end of this age of grace. Not the end of the world, but the end of this age of grace. And at that end, of course, Jesus raptures his church. Is that people will develop a capacity for delusion rather than the truth. They will want to believe a lie, and they actually will believe a lie rather than the truth of God's word. And it's so apparent today. I heard just recently Dr. Jeffers comment on this very subject, that the truth has been hidden. And then there was another beautiful pastor that commented on it as well. It is being spread, it seems, by many pastors today. Watch out, because the devil is out to delude you, to deceive you. And if we don't know the truth, 
and so many Christians don't read their Bibles on a regular basis. And if we don't know that truth, then the deceived one will deceive us. The deceived one will deceive us. The scientific revolution has produced an overemphasis, friends, on the secular and a decline of faith and principle that God teaches in his word. In fact, they want to take away every vestige of truth and give you something they call their truth. Every man did what was right in his own eyes is not the truth of God, but is the truth of man today. Sin is explained away by psychological terminology. God is portrayed as a sentimental crea creature who never f lets his wrath fall on anyone. Everyone's going to heaven. I can tell you, according to the word of God, not everyone will get there. They will not get there. There's only one way to get there. It's through faith in Jesus Christ. But it's being taught in many pulpits today, and probably you're not listening to them because you're listening to the godly pulpits, but in many pulpits today, there are other ways that people can get to heaven by being good, by being faithful, by doing what comes naturally. And that is not a way to get to heaven. Thousands are deluded by philosophies that are destroying the strength of our nation and threatening our own security. This is not going to save us. What is this? Our military might? Our appeasement? The only thing that's going to save America is if my people will humble themselves and pray and the nation will turn away from its evil ways. Nowadays, the nation has turned to other religions rather than the teachings of the word of the living God. Surely we are living in a day that the apostle Paul said this about, they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. They did not receive the love of the truth. And for this reason, 2 Thessalonians 2, 10 to 12, for this reason, God will send them a strong delusion. If you don't abide in the truth, friends, then God's going to send you a strong delusion. And you'll think you're abiding in the truth, but you won't. You'll think you're on your way to heaven, but you're not. And what an awful awakening comes when you find yourself in the place of torment like the rich man did in the story of Lazarus and the rich man. The word of God says they will be sent a strong delusion that they should not believe the truth but should believe a lie. If you refuse to believe the word of God, then God will allow the devil to deceive you into thinking everything's okay. Live today for it is the only day you have. This is all there is to life. And my friends, the Bible teaches there is more to life than this world that we live in. And he says, he sends them a strong delusion that they may be condemned. Who did not believe the truth? That's the only reason people are condemned. Pharaoh was condemned because he wouldn't believe the truth that Moses gave him. He refused to believe the truth. His son suffered the consequence. All the sons of Egypt that didn't receive the truth suffered the same consequence. They died. And it's because they did not believe the truth when Moses came to give it. What a mystery and striking statement Paul makes here. And yet, what a candid picture of modern man deceive 
by political leaders who seek to support their selves by giving people what they want but never following through. Can you imagine the political season we will enter into not too long from now for the midterms? It's a political season where people will tell you what you want to know, but it's only for the purpose of getting elected. And then notice what they follow through with. Most of them never follow through with what they say. So you can only vote, and you should vote, by prayer and seeking God's direction. God's direction in who to elect. Because you cannot, you cannot believe what politicians say. Then the, there is an indication that because they have rejected the truth, whether they're politicians or whether they're church members, whoever they may be, because they have rejected the truth, God gives them that delusion. Paul told the Romans these words. They exchange the truth of God. They exchange the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator. How many people are serving and worshiping Mother Nature? Mother Nature doesn't exist, but they worship that God because they put that God, that false God, above the true God. And they listen more to what people say rather than what God says. Three times in the first chapter of Romans, the scripture says, God gave them up. That's serious. Can God say that about America? I hope not. Because if God gives up on America, America has no future, none whatsoever. It will go down like all the other nations of the world, and it will be totally defeated and useless. The only way to avert that is not to accept the delusion, but accept the word of the living God. So God gave them over because of their sins. God gave them over because they would not listen to the truth. They don't want to hear the Bible. They want to hear the falseness of a lie rather than the truth. If somebody said to you, today your soul's going to be required of you, and you said, I don't believe it, I'm not going to listen to it, what did God say to the man who tried to build bigger mansions, bigger uh, storehouses and everything? He said, this day your soul will be required of you, then whose shall these things be? And then he said, you are a fool for believing a lie because today you're going to meet me. You're going to die. You're going to die. Prepare to meet your God. That is the truth. We should be prepared at any moment to meet God. Everywhere we look today, we see the propensity for delusion. We see it in our gullibility for false advertising. <laughs> you, you look at some of the advertising and you think that you, if you take a certain kind of, uh, let's say, well, I'm thinking of uh, aftershave. There, it came to me. If you take a certain kind of after aftershave, the girls will rush at you. They can't. They can't. High karate will take you over and they'll love you for it. Well, when I was young, I put that on, and it didn't do me any good. You see, the reality is this. I got a girl not because of high karate, but because of God's truth. He determined that I should have her, and by God's grace, he kept me from any other one that would take her place because the truth gave me the best. The truth gave me the best. 
We see the capacity for delusion in politics. Political platforms like the platform of trains are for the sole purpose of getting the person aboard. The passage in 2 Thessalonians indicates that God sends his delusion upon sinners who will not repent. The scriptures and the experience both suggest that they come to a point where God says, I've tried to reach you enough. My spirit will not always strive with you. I've tried to give you the truth, but now you have said no so many times, I'm not going to call you anymore. Unless we're called, we cannot be saved. So if you feel the presence of God calling you to be saved, don't put it off, or the devil will give you a strong delusion. People can sink so low in sin that God allows even Satan to take over and give them lies that they will believe in. What happened to Eve? She rebelled against God's word that was directly given to her and Adam and ate of the forbidden fruit because she thought she would be better than she was. And she found she was less than better than she was. The scriptures teach that it is possible for Christians to be deluded by the Antichrist in that day when he comes upon this earth. His lying wonders will, when a person receives Christ after the rapture, his lying wonders will deceive people into thinking that that is the way to go. He is truly Christ. He isn't because Christ came already and will come again to set up his kingdom. Even the church is in danger of being led astray by false teachers in our day. They don't teach the word of God. They teach prosperity. They teach everything else but the word of the living God. If you're in a church where you find they're teaching the Bible as the Bible states it, then thank God, because there are many churches that are not preaching the gospel, but another gospel. Jeremiah cried out in Jeremiah 23, verse 1, Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. God warned the people of Jerusalem that they were not to listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They make you worthless. They speak a vision of their own heart, not from God, not from the mouth of God. And that is Jeremiah 23, 16. God accused the prophets of that day of having perverted the word of God. I will bring an everlasting reproach upon you and a perpetual shame which shall not be forgotten. Jeremiah says from God in 23 verse 40. The scriptures teach that Satan sometimes fashions himself as an angel of light. He looks real. His words seem real, but they're not. He comes in a thousand subtle forms with delusions and lying wonders. He brings the delusion that sin will bring fullness of life, but it cannot, it will not. Second, Satan tries to get us to believe that the soul is of much less worth and importance than the body. In other words, take care of your body, but don't take care of your soul. It is the body that will perish. The soul will live forever. The word of God makes it very clear then as we conclude today that if a person doesn't know, and I've said this previous in this message, if he doesn't know the truth and doesn't abide in the truth, he is easily or she is easily taken by a strong delusion. They believe a lie, and the lie takes them to hell. 
don't believe a lie. The word of God gives you the truth. And the word of God will set you free if you believe it, embrace it, and live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It is your only hope in a world that is filled today with delusions of every kind. For the devil is mad. He is going around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Don't let him devour you. If you've not received Christ, receive him. If you have, stay true to the words of God. Let's pray. Father, we come to you and we thank you. We thank you for the word of God. You did not leave us without the word of God and the Holy Spirit that will dwell within every believer. I pray that you will open our hearts to deception and close our minds and desires to walk.